While Nintendo may have its critics and its detractors in certain circles of gaming, literally no one can argue against the fact that they are the most prolific publisher in terms of quality, polished games in the world. Since the Nintendo Switch released in early 2017, they have produced and published a lengthy list of high-profile games. Today, me, Jordan, Juan and James are going to take a look at them all, ranking all of Nintendo's outputs on the Switch in order of quality, 36 games in all, although some of those are some games bunched together. We're ranking them from worst to best, so grab yourself a coffee, strap yourself in, are you ready? Just a quick disclaimer that there may be some omissions from the list that you may or may not expect. For example, Mario and Rabbids was produced and published by Ubisoft, Nintendo had very little to do with it outside of publishing in Japan. And likewise, while Nintendo may have published games like Dragon Quest XI, Dragon Quest Builders and Octopath Traveler in the West, it would be slightly disrespectful to Square Enix by claiming them to be Nintendo's games. Our list is of games where Nintendo have a big say in development or ponied up the money for. Let's get on with it, rank bottom. Them. I think most people would agree that 1-2 Switch most certainly should have been a packing title with the Nintendo Switch itself when it went on sale for the first time. While a neat little party game experiment for the quirks of the system, it offered very little substance in terms of the player coming back for more over a period of time. You could have some fun for a while due to its weirdness, but there's definitely a reason many people have forgotten about this title. Sadly, someone has to be rock bottom, and I think very few people could argue with this one. Most people would agree that the true joy found in the Labo releases is the construction of the cardboard devices rather than the actual games found within. We're not going to deny the absolute genius behind the idea of creating cardboard controllers that somehow mix with the magic of the Joy-Cons, but if we're being real and talking as pure video games, the Labo releases were nothing more than mild distractions in the end. Although as each release came out, the quality of the game seemed to improve, so if Nintendo do decide to carry on with this series in 2020, there's definitely hope it could power up this list next time we put one together. Once you finish building your first creation... The Stretchers was a complete surprise from Nintendo. Without any fanfare or build-up promotion, it was dumped onto the eShop. This silly little arcade co-op puzzle thingy was developed jointly by Nintendo and Tarsia Studio, who are well known for the Little Night Nightmares games. You can blast through this hilarious crazy game in just a handful of hours, but it's well worth a look. If it was more developed, expanded and had a bit more meat to it, it could have been much higher on this list. As it is, it's just a commendable eShop title. Now for us, those three games just mentioned were fairly easy to place. Now we're getting into territory where the choices are much tougher to place. Before that though, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here and if you want to enjoy our great Nintendo Switch content. We do reviews as well as nice features like these that you really don't want to miss. Plus, when we hit 50,000 subscribers, then we will be giving away a Nintendo Switch Lite, so well worth it. Sushi Striker was very much one of those fill-in titles for a slightly slow period during last year. This Indie Zeros title was originally planned for the 3DS, but was also shifted to the Nintendo Switch once the Switch took off, and the 3DS was well done. Sushi Strikers really is a decent game, there's no doubt about that, with some production values that go above and beyond what you'd expect for an action puzzle game. But one thing was immediately clear, it's a game that was much more suited to the 3DS with its dual screen and stylus. And for that reason, it ranks a little lower on this list. Mario Tennis Aces was a fine return to form after the series had floundered the past few entries, especially with the complete lack of care put into Mario Tennis Ultra Smash on the Wii U. Mario Aces is pretty much exactly what Ultra Smash should have been and probably would have been had the console been a success. Anyways, enough about the previous games, Aces was a big improvement all around, including an enjoyable enough story mode as a sweet distraction, plus the classic gameplay with plenty of modes to go around, plus some nice updates after release. It's pretty low on the list, not because it's bad per se, but it did quite lack the legs of most Nintendo games and the scope of what it has to offer is just, well, it's tennis. Still, if you're looking for an arcade sports title, this is one to go for. 
In the same vein as the last game we just talked about, Super Mario Party is a return to form in the series. In what was a beleaguered misadventure the past two or three entries, Super Mario Party brought the series back to almost its best. It's also a game that sold incredibly well too, with it being one of the best selling games on the system. It's incredibly odd that at the time of this video's production, there's been no major updates or DLC, which would be easy money for Nintendo. But then again, they're probably already polishing up Super Super Mario Party 2 by now. Ring Fit Adventure is very much the same as Labo in terms of Nintendo's ingenuity. They've successfully done the exercise while playing a game thing before, but not quite as gamified as Ring Fit Adventure, if that's even a word. Using a Pilates ring with Joy-Cons allows gamers to go on an RPG adventure while getting ripped in the process. Now this is no joke either, if the gameplay of doing exercise moves grips you while fighting enemies or travelling the landscape, then you will most certainly lose weight thanks to the incredible workout that you'll get from this game. Of course it is slightly limited in its scope, which pegs it down on this list somewhat, but after selling decently as a new IP, then a next entry with more polished bells and whistles could be absolutely fantastic. Kirby Star Allies is one of the safer Kirby games ever produced. It's a very good game, but really didn't do a whole lot to advance the series, and many would agree that despite providing a decent amount of fun, it was a slight step back for the series after the wonderful 3DS games. How Labs did a great job of supporting this one over a year or so, with extra content dropping every once in a while, which provided much needed longevity, and if you pick it up right now, there's no doubt you'll have an absolutely lovely, charming time with it. But let's face it, it's been done before better. And by the way, we're going to slot the eShop game Super Kirby Clash in here too, just because. And from the creators of Kirby, we have arguably an even better title from them, Box Boy and Box Girl. Yes, it's a dinky little eShop game, but that doesn't stop it from being one of the top tier eShop only titles from Nintendo. This inventive little puzzler is cute and cunning, this time including a series first multiplayer. It's the biggest game in the series yet and despite going under the radar a bit soon after release, it's definitely worth searching for it on the eShop. Now Stipper Clips is absolutely genius as a two player couch co-op game, the perfect little puzzle game that's ripe for bonding sessions between friends and families as your two little characters cut shapes out of each other to solve mini puzzles. Even though it wasn't made by Nintendo, they totally embraced the indie developers behind it by funding the original demo into a fully fledged game. It's a great little game for sure and one that all families should have in their collection. Pokken Tournament DX is the first of plenty of ports from Wii U games that got a second chance of life on an actual successful console. Produced by Bandai Namco for arcades, this Pokemon spin-off gives a great look at what many people initially dreamed of the actual mainline Pokemon games turning into, at least with the frantic battle system. What you have is a very competent fighter that may have not set the competitive world alight, but it's still a lot of fun and the attention to detail in some aspects is fantastic. The Switch version has all the content, plus more to make it the best version of the game by a mile. Cadence of Hyrule, or if you want to use its ridiculously long official title, Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring The Legend of Zelda. It's one of the few times that Nintendo has collaborated with a small studio and it paid off big time here. Fusing Crypt of the Necrodancer with Legend of Zelda tropes, it worked very well indeed. Sure, the longevity is much less than the original Necrodancer, and some folk may wish to have a bit more bang for their book, but you'll still have a highly polished and unique take on the Legend of Zelda series. A rogue light rhythm Zelda game? Who'd have thought that? Also, the music is amazing. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 was a bit of a coup from Nintendo, pulling the license out of nowhere to bring the cult classic series as a Nintendo exclusive. Developed by Team Ninja, the shallow hack and slash beaten up nature may not have enamoured too many, but that's what the series was all about. Just button mashing with your favourite Marvel heroes, taking down scores of bad guys and then wailing on an overpowered health sponge boss at the end. The writing and attention to detail was spot on here, with great fan service for Marvel fans. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were the first standard Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch, remakes of the original game with a prime focus on Pokemon Yellow. 
Many described it as baby's first Pokemon, but that's probably a bit too harsh as it was a loving recreation of the original game with some Pokemon Go theatrics brought in to attract the mobile audience. It's very harmless, but also very fun and introduced Pokemon to the overworld rather than being in the grass, which for us was a very important step. If you have a young kid who you want to introduce to Pokemon, this is the place to start. Damon X Machina is less of a Nintendo title than most on this list, so much so that we considered not including it, since it's unclear just how much involvement Nintendo had in this one, either in terms of design input or financial backing, but for completionist's sake, Let's add it in anyways. While there was initial hype around Damon X Machina, it released to slightly muted reception after a couple of demos probably did more harm than good for the sales. Mechs are quite a niche thing in western pop culture, and although this game does pack quite a lot of goodness, it did very little in the way of something special. Decent game for sure, and if you decide to pick it up on a whim, I'm sure you'll have a fun time, but it's certainly not top tier for the Switch. New Super Mario Bros U Deluxe was probably a Wii U game that no one really wanted, but the one that was most inevitable. Nintendo had to get this one out before Super Mario Maker 2 was to be announced, in order to not make it obsolete. And while the art style and personality may be one of the blandest in a Mario game, undeniably, it's still a great game regardless. Excellent level variety, coupled with some of the best chaotic multiplayer action around, if you've got three of your mates over, or perhaps with the family over Christmas, you can't go wrong with a bit of multiplayer on this one. Fire Emblem Warriors is a decent game, there's no doubt about that. It melded the Fire Emblem series with the Dynasty Warriors gameplay, added a nice bit of tactical depth, plus some of Fire Emblem's trademark mechanics. Unfortunately, the story was rubbish and there just wasn't enough variety in the character's gameplay to make it anything more than just a decent time for fans of the Musu style games. There's plenty of choice for the genre on the Switch and this one probably falls somewhere in the middle if you're going to rank them all. Hyrule Warriors is a bit of a monster game. A Dynasty Warriors spin on the Legend of Zelda series is one of the best of a vast bunch of the genre. Even on the Switch there are so many to choose from, but Hyrule Warriors may be the best of the lot in terms of using the source material, going wild with it, and providing a fantastic time as you take down hordes of enemies that stand in your way. Sure, it's a port of a Wii U game, but now packed with all the content from both 3DS, the Wii U and the DLC, it will last you dozens and dozens of hours it's button mashing at its finest. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, yet another Wii U port, but that ain't stopping this unbearably cute puzzle game from reaching higher on our list than many of the other games here. It's a small game, far less grand than many of the games we've already talked about on this list, but it's such a tightly crafted experience that even though it may not excite you enough to consider it, once you do get it in your hands, then you won't want to put it down. It charms the socks off you and will be a nice test of your cognitive powers as little Captain Toad must traverse each level without the ability to jump. It's a beautiful light snack of a game, something most definitely worth experiencing. Once you come to terms with the fact that Yoshi's Crafted World isn't as good as the previous game, Woolly World, then you will see Crafted World for what it truly is. It's a lovely little charming platformer that has Yoshi traversing seemingly handmade levels of card, buttons and everything else you'd expect to find in your local craft shop. It's a big game too, the main story will give you a decent length for a 2D platformer, but getting all the collectibles will take you a hefty amount of time and you'll enjoy every second of it. Sure, visually, musically and in its level design, it's a step down in every way to Woolly World, but I've gotten over that. Yep, it doesn't sting at all one bit. Woolly World was lovely. Pokemon Sword and Shield may be the most controversial game on this list due to many factors in the run up to its release, but I think most people can now agree that although it still retains that same great Pokemon feel, it's not exactly the big series step we were hoping for, but despite that, you will still have a great time exploring the new Galar region and enjoy the fantastic new Pokemon designs it has to offer. Some of the best new Pokemon they've ever come up with. This also looks set to become the best selling Switch game of all time due to record sales from the off and leading into Christmas. Will it surpass Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? Time will tell. ARMS was a great attempt at doing something a bit different with the fighting genre. Built by the team that made Mario Kart, there's a lot of quality behind its initially awkward concept of extendable arms. While it may not be everyone's cup of tea, it's safe to say that those who click with arms absolutely adore it and consider it to be one of Nintendo's finest new game attempts in a long time. 
There's a learning curve, but once you get past that, you'll have fantastic fun battling online with arms. Right guys, while the last bunch of games could probably be accepted by the majority of people who may shift around one or two games here and there without much fuss, a live and let live deal, from this point on, this is where it gets a bit tasty. And I don't mean tasty like a roast chicken on a Sunday dinner plate, I mean the kind of tasty when you're sat at a bar and one drunk guy makes a derogatory comment about another drunk guy and you're sitting there and thinking, oh no, things are gonna get tasty. Yeah, that kind of tasty. So, let's have a quick break before the storm arrives. Two more Wii U ports and don't worry, they're not the last. Bayonetta 1 and 2 were released as a double pack, two games that many people consider to be the pinnacle of the action genre. If you're looking for your hardcore mature Nintendo games, then look no further. Due to that hardcore nature though, these aren't the kind of games that appeal to everyone and there's a reason that despite incredible praise, every release has met with less than worthy of what people think they should achieve. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is an incredibly charming retelling of the original Game Boy Classic. Naturally, as a top-down Zelda game, a legendary one at that, the end product is of course amazing. It's slightly more bite-sized in nature, and this remake honours the original game with total respect, perhaps a bit too much. More new additions would have been welcome for those who already played it originally. For new players of the game, you're looking at a nice, simple entry point into the Zelda series with an absolutely stunning presentation, at least until you get to the frame rate, which is very much out of character for a Nintendo game, at least one as simple looking as this. When it comes to the amount of hours played, we're sure that many people will have Tetris 99 at the top of their playtime list. This addictive battle royale take on the ultimate classic gameplay of Tetris is an absolute dream to behold. It's being constantly updated with more content, skins and competitions. You'd have this on your Switch and be very content. Who needs Fortnite when you've got Tetris 99? Fire Emblem Three Houses took quite a long time to arrive despite being revealed pretty much around the same time as the Switch. A long return to the home console, many Fire Emblem fans were very pleased with how this one turned out. Steadily going back to a more mature theme, the amount of content in this strategy RPG is just staggering. With three houses to choose from, the storylines seem endless, plus it has that great character bonding of Awakening without stepping over the line like they did in Fates. It's the biggest and best of the series since its rebirth. Astral Chain is platinum perfected, at least that's what we stated in our review of this excellent action game. While platinum games may have programmed better action in some of their other games before, the package as a whole for Astral Chain makes it eclipse everything else they've done before in our opinion. An amazing setting, story, soundtrack, the game didn't sell as well as it deserved, but of course that comes with the territory for platinum games. If you're into action games and you haven't already gotten a hold of this one yet, you would be doing yourself a favour if you did get it. This game deserves success. Now Super Mario Maker 2 is pretty much the ultimate 2D Mario game, a game where you create and can play millions of other players creations both amazing and terrible, plus Nintendo themselves getting into the action with their own efforts. When it released it pretty much made the new Super Mario Bros U obsolete. There was a bit of a lull after the release though as updates were slow to come. Until recently we've got a pretty much whole new set of toys to play with considering they added 8-bit Link with far more abilities and potential. For us, this is part of the list where each of these games are essential if you're a Switch owner. How can you own a Switch and not own Mario Maker 2? While people may not talk much about Splatoon 2 these days, it's still one of the core pillars of the Nintendo Switch and was one of the earlier releases that really helped propel the system to success right from the off. An addictive online shooter with more colour and fun than any other game developer has managed before in this genre. Again, just like Tetris 99, it's impossible to just have one or two rounds. What was supposed to be a quick 20 minute time killer will instantly turn into two or three hours of fun without you even noticing. It's easily one of the best games on the system and is essential to own. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is easily the best modern JRPG on the Switch 
I don't think there's much argument about that. There's a reason it was second in our list of best Switch RPGs, only falling behind some legendary classics. Although, as many of you stated in that list, you thought that we made a mistake because Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is universally loved in JRPG fandom. It's an absolutely massive game filled with breathtaking areas, great battles, and so much content that it's almost scary to ever start playing it. If you love RPGs, you need this in your collection. Have you blown a gasket yet? If you haven't already, well, we're about to head into the territory where even family members start to disown each other. If your brother or mother is sitting in the same room at this moment, tell them to leave immediately because things are about to go down. We'll give you a few moments to sort that out. Now, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is an absolute monster. It was the best-selling game on the Wii U for a reason, and it's the best-selling game on the Nintendo Switch for a reason too. Well, just about. I'm sure it's looking awkwardly over its shoulder at the impending Pokemon Tsunami. Mario Kart 8 is what playing games is all about. There's a reason it's not only the best kart racer on the Switch, but also of all time. The physics are just unmatched, and the level of polish and personality is an absolute joy to behold, and we'd love to see some DLC packs. We'd certainly buy them ourselves. Is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze the best 2D platformer ever made? Taking off the nostalgia goggles of Super Mario World, Sonic 2, Rayman, Origins, etc. Yes, it very well may be. Retro Studios did an amazing job creating the game nobody wanted them to create. While everyone was desperate for Metroid Prime, which they're working on right now, they were cheerfully creating a masterpiece in level design, game mechanics and personality. And yes, it's a Wii U port, but now it's extra funky. The organic, lively levels fill to the brim with secrets, excitement and thrills, with a challenge that isn't something you can just shrug off. For us, this is the best 2D platformer ever made. Luigi's Mansion 3 probably surprised many people about its quality. Most people probably thought that it would be a decent, solid entry in a well-loved series. But when we reviewed it, our minds were blown at the quality on offer here. Absolutely polished to perfection, unbelievable production values, this is the best looking game on the Nintendo Switch, no debate. It has more personality in just one cutscene than most releases can manage in a whole game. Great gameplay, great music, the quality of the package is something to behold. You you can see that this is a game that's had plenty of time in the oven and it's paid off big time. What a quality, quality game. Super Smash Bros Ultimate lives up to its name. In fact, the original description of the word Ultimate in the dictionary has been replaced by the box art of Smash Bros Ultimate because it really is the total combination of what the series has to offer. Party game fighting at its finest with more content and characters than can possibly be imagined and we're still getting more in the future. It's so good that it's impossible to see how they could even attempt to do a sequel. And the sales show it. Even though it's only been on sale for one year, it's the best selling fighting game of all time. Absolutely crazy and it's a coming together on a scale that will probably never happen again. How does one launch a console successfully? Well, you launch it with one of the greatest games of all time, of course. While originally only spoken as a Wii U title, there was no way Nintendo would have ever let it not kick off the Nintendo Switch with an absolute bang. It's a game that turned the series on its head and embarrassed publishers who'd been doing open world games for years, knocking out of the park on the first attempt. It's a game that truly felt like an adventure. You felt free as a bird without having the hallmarks of open world games sagging you down. Every direction you would go, you would find something interesting. While it lacked traditional dungeons, Breath of the Wild had so many ingenious puzzle rooms in which you could tackle in so many different ways, thanks to the marvellous physics engine put into it. I can bet for sure that Breath of the Wild made even the most jaded of gamer get excited by the hobby once more. Super Mario Odyssey. While it was almost impossible for us to separate this and Breath of the Wild for number one, we decided that Mario Odyssey would pip it to the post due to its sheer universal accessibility and pure unadulterated gameplay which anyone can obtain joy from. While it may not surpass something like Mario 64 or Mario Galaxy in terms of rewriting the whole genre, you still manage to get a game that is better than both of those. So much variety, so many fantastic gameplay elements, it's the odyssey of a lifetime and would be absolutely shocked if Mario Odyssey 2 development wasn't well underway already to perfect this game even more. 
on the Switch. For such a universal game, you don't get much better than this. For us, this is the first game that people should pick up alongside their shiny new Nintendo Switch. And that's why we rank it the number one Switch game from Nintendo. Now it's your turn. In the pinned comment and description, there is a list of all the games here. In the comments, you post yours in order of where you rank them. We want to see your list. Afterwards, be sure to check out our team's top 5 each, plus all the best Nintendo Switch imports this year of 2019. We'll see you over there. Yeah.